That's that's fair. He could knowing him, he could join to you hit record. Yep. Along the way. Got it recording. And Mindy, let us know if you can't hear anything, okay? Okay. I hear everybody so far. Okay, great. We'll go ahead and uh, call the meeting to order and um uh, Barbara will go ahead and ask for your roll call. Stevens? Here. Bachman? Here. Paulus? Williams? Here. Uh, Craddock? Here. Muncie? Here. And Foley? Here. Okay, can we ask for a motion in a second to approve the meeting and the, approve minutes from the previous meeting? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting. Second. Um, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, motion carried. Okay, uh, so I guess what we'll do, maybe, maybe Seth, could you walk us through kind of the, the plan of attack today? So, yeah, the plan of attack for tonight is is obviously we've got a, our list of projects we've been working with now for a few months. And um, I had uh, suggested that the subcommittees get together and just kind of run through a scoring session just to practice for tonight. But we want to score the projects and then just kind of see what bubbles to the surface for the first couple years of the plan. Um, and I think the scoring process will help with that. Um, and then, you know, just depending on the scoring, you know, I think we should be able to put together our five-year plan. So the, the way that I'm putting, the way I've put it is points one through five for each category, one being the highest, I know it's kind of reverse, but uh, five being the lowest. So um, if you've done it the other way, we'll just kind of have to reverse our, our thinking on that. But um, you know, and that way, the the lowest score essentially is um, the the project that we think is um, kind of may, maybe goes the first couple of years, or uh, you, you know, um, j just rates a little higher than some of the others. So, um, with that, um, when you say one is highest, five is lowest, I mean one is um, kind of the premier. Okay. Or it. Or, or it kind of meets that category, that uh, scoring category, the best. Okay. Gotcha. Hold on a second, Seth. I think we did the opposite. Um, the only reason I, I think, think we happen. did the. Well, I think our ones were low. Um, I, I think I think no, we did it. Know. I think we did it okay. I think we but were we, looking that's at. That's the way we did it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, can I just ask this question? We did it that way, right, Derek? We we did it backwards. Oh, that's okay. I thought Main Street was number one. Let me make sure. No, he, he means the how how we scored one through five, like oh. one being the highest, five being the lowest. I oh, think we did five being the highest. Oh, yeah, we did it backwards. Would we like to do it the other way? Uh, well, I think that's what we did though. Our, our one was we, we kind of just put one. it in order. Right, we put it in <laughs> yeah, order. We didn't really gotcha. okay. score it. Kind of yeah. just almost did a ranking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Five, let's talk about it for a second because I think what, and I don't know if I, <laughs> I think what I was, you didn't use the word one being easy, five being hard at any point, did you? I don't think so. Okay, then I really screwed it up. <laughs> I messed up. But, yeah, but um, so the, let's talk about it for a second. I mean, if um, at the end of the day, we want to, Let's take let's take the first one for example the um, complete the main street sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know? Council wants to know if they add up the scoring mechanism at the end of that category. They want to know which one they should logically start with first, right? Well, I don't think council really has an expectation of what report they're going to receive from us. So for me, the scoring was. Um, to help really put this five-year plan together and we may only have enough projects for the five-year plan i don't you know i don't know that uh, um i don't know that the scoring is going to narrow the field so much as maybe maybe the way to look at it is um the highest scoring projects are the ones that maybe could happen in the first couple years maybe the lowest hanging fruit do we want to approach it that way and then the, the lower scores, the approach would be maybe there's a high cost or there, there isn't availability of, 
of land so much. Um, there really isn't a community urgency for it. Um, that kind of thing. So I guess I'm having a different way of thinking about it too, because I mean, our list is, is not huge and we're trying to put together a five-year plan. Now that said, there's a lot of, not maybe not a lot, there are some more expensive things on the list, yeah, so. The difficulty, and I remember the initial um, you know, plan Clayton does kind of have that, you know, the, the timeline. And you have, there is a difference between low-hanging fruit. Yeah. And then also the ones that it's like, oh, this would be, you know, maybe a priority, but it's also really expensive. And more time consuming. And would need to and be phased, time. right? Yeah. As opposed to, and, but, yeah, potentially looking at that. You um, know, a one shot and, and get the yeah, whole thing done. Kind of, yeah, how do we almost do both of those? Because obviously, low hanging fruit, I, I, think that, I, I think that's a big thing with, I know, especially you know, mm -hmm. Mike and myself, of, of like, hey, let's get those going. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think that's how we raised ours, right? right. The easiest. Time. Yeah. In order. Yeah. So, so maybe low hanging fruit are the ones and twos as we do this. Uh, maybe. Um, well, we have four that we're going to be just like each in the one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe, kind of, may, maybe, okay. maybe yeah. threes and fours are going to be years three and four, and, and maybe the fives are projects we end up phasing, which doesn't mean we don't get funding early on. It's just that we have to phase it out and do it slowly. Uh, is, do you all think that's a decent approach? Yeah, that's kind of how we approached it, I think. Okay. I think, Barbara, if you, if, you, if you could capture, like, when we get done with every section, like, maybe we would do say, okay, what's, what are the, what are the, what's the top one or two? So we could just capture those for sure that we want to, like, attack, uh, you know, early. And then what's the one that maybe could be, Something wrong there. If, if one that could be aspirational and longer term, but really cool to do, or, you know, like, I, I, can we say it like that? Or is that, is that too clunky? Because some of the, I will say. I, yeah, I get what you're saying. Because, um, yeah, yeah. for example, the, the, the connection to the regional bike belt, we, you know, we spent a lot of time in our committee talking about that. I'd love to see that happen. And I know it's not going to happen next year, right? And maybe not in the first five, yeah, right? Yeah. I can see we almost we know it's gonna be long term. We also but we don't want it to be a low priority. Right. And that's yeah, how do we yeah. work that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know I had kind of raised that the question with a question, but uh, oh, it's like, yeah, it's mm -hmm. trying to figure out how do we rank that. Because like Kim and myself, we kind of just ranked ours and then we even said like, well, one through four kind of go together. So yeah. we might even get all lumped yeah. into one. So, so maybe to that point, like at the end of each bucket that we talk about, Barbara, maybe we could like kind of try to give you something that could could capture that, like, you know, kind of logically. So that mm -hmm. when, when we're explaining this stuff a month or two now to the council, we're like, all right, at the end of the day, these are the ones that we feel like are achievable now, but this is the one thing that we think could be kind of cool to do and we shouldn't take our eye off that, something like that. Okay, don't kill us. Sorry. <laughs> you want to make Barbara put it in the word? Right, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try to help you. We'll try to help you. She's pretty good at that. We'll help you. Yeah. That's good. So is that okay? Yeah, that works. And I'll take, I'll take take good notes. As, <laughs> I'll take good notes as well and, and ultimately be putting, you know, kind of a draft together for everybody to consider and, okay. and we'll come together next month. Probably in the same format um, in person and, and uh and go through that draft. Cool. So, so do you want to start with the first category? Yeah. Then, um, let's do it. Let's just go with top the, to bottom. Walkable neighborhoods. Okay, so complete main street sidewalks. So the categories that we're looking at and whether we want to score them or not or just kind of talk through them are cost, accessibility, and that refers to or could refer to available land or right of way, benefit to the largest number of residents, perceived impact to our community, the availability of outside funding sources. Some of that we've talked about. So there may be you know, sources that we're just not aware of right now at the table. And then urgency and time to complete. So does anybody have a thought on cost? Sure, I'm going to ask this one question. Would it be easier for us if instead of, and nothing against you and Mike, because I know fine. nothing against you, sir, because I know, I know you're, all these projects have all of those elements. Would it be better if we talked about each bucket in terms of really just our gut feel for what is 
achievable in the next couple of years and what is worth achieving in the next three or four. And, and I mean, I, like for example, um, knowing other pots of money, I don't know that we all have had time to figure that stuff out, right? We have ideas, right? but do we need to put a score around that? Probably not. I mean, so maybe that's in the interest of time, maybe that's the best way is let's, let's kind of number these. And, and I do have um, completion time frame, second mm -hmm. column. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's just look at these and put a year to each of them as opposed to just scoring them, you know, laboriously. I mean, like that might be the hard thing for us because we're not, I mean, you know, it'd be different if we had a, if we had time months to kind of look at each one of these sections. So yeah, that's what I feel. Like. I don't know. I don't mean to muck it up here, but. No, no, it's it's logical. Um, it, it's only we. I could look at it as kind of like a you know short term mm -hmm. low hanging fruit, i.e. that um, you know maybe call that like a one to three something mm -hmm. like that one to two one to three yeah and then maybe something of a three to five and then five plus because again yeah and there's okay. a lot that you know. And not to say that that's something you put on the back burner, but yeah. it's stuff we know that is going to require major funding. And maybe we can look at it as a way of like the longer term stuff of, you know, maybe it also needs to be phased, you know, done in phases. Yeah. And it's still going to be for the one big goal. I'm here, you know, complete yeah. sidewalks on National Road. Well, mm -hmm. that could be, that might be done in over 10 year period. And maybe every few years we do a different section. I'm just using that as an example. But um, I know that's kind of still maybe mucking the waters up a little bit here, but um, it's okay. That's yeah, good. I think I, almost a different, like maybe three tiers okay. of, of mm -hmm. things. If that maybe keeps it a little simple, you know, short term, medium term, yeah, and long term. Yeah, I one, think so. one thing that we talked about, Seth and I talked about, and just put a different, I think, perspective on it for me and for I think for Seth too, was we looked at that. Um, little section of completing us because all these talk about or at least four of them or five of them talk about sidewalks building sidewalks because we got a bunch of gaps everywhere that little section from if everybody knows what this is over there on Union Road from Hunter's Glen from the condo section to Casey's was a roughly about $89,000 you know, it's in front of one property. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's all the, you know, what's, because I, I didn't, I had no idea what's, you know, I'm thinking, well, what's it cost 10 grand? You know, would it cost yeah. 10,000? Then I'm like, well, we could probably fill in a lot more sidewalks, but 89,000 for that. And that doesn't even benefit very many people. And what was, what did that cost include? Was that like, I think, <coughs> uh, Randy, I think, gave us that cost. Yeah, I mean, it, it would it would be concrete. It would be getting some eat, drainage getting the, work and buying the or the right amount, yeah, yeah. right away. When I don't but even again, do that, if I, you're if you're looking at just the cost, then we don't have really a whole lot of information about outside funding right. at this right. point. You know, maybe with outside funding, that might cost us. Ten thousand dollars. Yeah. So, and outside funding is something you know, we do have. It kind of comes down to staff too. Well, know, yeah. No, I mean that, that that's a staff function. We 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 learn, we learn of and apply for grants um, to to help our projects, and and so that's definitely something that we we do all the time. So. You know, you know, I, I assigned that to the subcommittees at one point just to see if you guys were aware of anything. And it's okay if, you know, there, there wasn't a lot that came out of that, but I, I still think we did have some, some interesting uh, programs that came out of you guys looking at, is there outside funding sources? So that's helpful to staff. But ultimately, yeah, Brendan's right, that, that'll come down to us to, to find and apply for, uh, to, to assist with that. But, you know, maybe as we're looking at sidewalk, completions on Main Street and National and, and Union and then the different areas that, that this group has talked about, d d maybe that all fits into the sidewalk infill program that, that's kind of listed in Great Streets. And, uh, you know, I don't know if, if, if you call that short or midterm, 
I mean, but, but maybe council can, can fund that program a little bit each year and we get, you know, we, we tick off projects, you know, year by year and ultimately we're going to get a, we're going to get it all filled in and, and we'll become much more walkable as a result. So does it, does everyone feel comfortable with that idea? Mm -hmm. yeah. so, yeah, can I ask another question? Sure. It, and maybe I'm just dense, but the, um, let's say there's five in each of the four groups, right? So that gives us 20 different projects that we're looking at, which mm -hmm. I know there's more, but let's say there's 20. Are we ranking these from one to 20? Are we ranking them in each group one to five? I mean, it's a, I- It's a good question. I think what we're trying to do now in the interest of time and um, beca because some of these categories would be hard to, to really put a value to, I think we're trying to rank them, what can be done short term, one to two years, mid, mid term, three to five years, and then long term, five plus. And those would be things that are, you know, more of a, a phased program, like, like sidewalk infill, for example. Does that help? Yes, that helps. And, and, and I would too, say, Mindy, too, just to add on to your thought there, I think if there's something that we think the city shouldn't spend time on, we should say that too. By the way, you know, because mm -hmm. there's a lot here. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we had times, you know, we uh, get to daydream and yeah. about some things, and then the, yeah. I think the times we do that one meeting, the next one, like that might be a little bit. Of a <laughs> <laughs> and that happens. Hey, that's what we're for. I have a suggestion that might be able to address Dan's uh, concern about what if we add a an extra category just for feasibility mm -hmm. so that way uh, uh, we can say okay it's low-hanging fruit or it's completable in five years or it's pie in the sky idea just add it in so that way when we get down to calculating that final score for each each uh, project we have a, at least one factor on that one through five scale that can we can add in instead of because relying on the year doesn't really mean as much you know, if it's a, if a completely feasible project that we have money for it that takes five years, that's not too helpful. Yeah. But if, if it's a, a feasible project, I think that should be uh, taken into consideration. And uh, another thought I had when Mike was telling us how much the sidewalk costs, you know, I understand that, but I don't know what it means to, uh, from a budget perspective, like a snowplow might cost you know, 50,000 or 100,000, but I don't know what that means to the city or to our budget, you know, because uh, I'm not looking into the uh, coffers here to, to find out how much money we have to throw around or how much is right. that a lot, you know, that, that's kind of what my question is. Um, Snowplows were over $150,000 each. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so people don't, and, and then yeah. they have to add all the extras onto them. Yeah, so, I, you know, I don't know what, what that looks like in that. Well, I think I think I think it goes back to I mean, if, if it if it benefit if it was a long stretch and benefited a lot of people, I think it'd be cheap. But I think it benefits a few people, and it's a short stretch, and it goes to only goes one place, the Casey's. Yeah. So that you know that's kind of where I kind of and I and and I don't know what it would cost to do from you know from here down to yeah. Salem and all that, but I'm thinking that little stretch is. 89 thousand that seems like a lot to me and if we look at it like i said all you have to do is drive around i did that my, even yeah. when i left here the other night i just went more critical to driving around you know going home right and man we got a lot, lot of places with no sidewalks yeah. a lot of places i mean street lights again we have none yep you know, we, that was a different conversation <laughs> we had but those kind of things we have we don't have very much of that stuff and so yeah it's going to be it's going to be really costly and it'll and over time especially on the main street stuff like what we were uh, what we said about the sidewalks there it may not be as costly for us there yeah. because as businesses develop on there like we use like the better new veterinarian down there at old salem and and maine well when they build part of the deal is they put the sidewalk in so if you, you can imagine, well, okay, so if we get 30 businesses along there, it'll they'll automatically link everything together. Yeah, so that, that'll, be, that'll be sweet. 
but making the walkable neighborhoods, that'll make Main Street walkable. But, you know, how much are we, I think what we said is how much are we going to actually make the neighborhoods walkable, you know, from your house to my house? Mm -hmm. as a, you know, as a crow flies, it's not that far, but right. I'm probably yeah. never going to walk over. I might jump in my car and drive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lazy. Well, I mean, you got to cross 49. Yeah. And, you know, of course, that's, that's going to get hurt this summer. Uh, yeah, that's right. I, and w you do look at, not just in Clayton, but in some of the surrounding communities. I mean, when does some, you look at when some like infrastructure things of like roads, sidewalks get put in? It was when stuff came in. Look at look at around Caterpillar. You know, yeah. uh, look at Main Street in Inglewood. Look at all the work that happened when a lot of new stuff came in there maybe yeah. you know, three or four years ago. It, it's almost obviously, you know, if you build it, they will come. It's kind of, well, if they come, then time to build. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't that's. A necessity mm, until they got yeah. And it's, yeah, right. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's difficult to, yeah, say, like, well, let's put in these sidewalks and everything and then hope for these things to, to come in. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, um, to Derek's, so let's start digging into it. Obviously, to Derek's point, Seth, what about this? To his point, after we get done giving our thoughts on these on our on our sections here, could you could you look at that feasibility question and give your personal opinion? Well, your personal, but your professional opinion about about what we came up with, and then give that back to us. I mean, I think I and there's can. no wrong answers. Right? Yeah, I mean, I, I I think I can make an attempt. I mean, there's a lot that goes in, the, in into that, and the budget's a big part. You know, whether. Sure it's feasible. And I think, Brendan, to your point, I, mean, I kind of said this in the beginning of our group, I think what we've done is really, really important. But, you know, as far as implementing Plan Clayton, you know, I think development is going to take care of a lot of that as it comes in. Um, what we're looking to do is, is there anything that the city can do now to help set the table for additional development, future growth, uh, or simply to meet needs that aren't being met for the residents that are here now. Um, and so that, that's kind of my hope in, in this get, getting this group together was, you know, was to kind of put a list together of some of that. So I was tasked with implementing Plan Clayton, and um, I didn't think I could do that without this group. And so I appreciate everybody's input. But that's what I'm looking for, I guess, is just some things that we can do to set table for future growth, but also to meet some needs that aren't being met for the residents right now. I think a lot, I think a majority of this would fall under that. Yeah, we've got some big stuff. Yeah. You know, of science. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's obviously big and expensive there. But you look at a lot of this, it's it's a lot of just, you know, basic plan of planning, get guidelines, things like that. So I think, you know, overall looking at this list, it kind of, like a lot of it does yeah. fall under that. Well, I, I think it's important too, because when, my understanding, when a developer or, or somebody's looking to build in a, in a city, they're looking at the kind of stuff, do they provide, you know, for, for the residents or the schools good? Is their infrastructure good? Are they well branded? And a lot of that hits in this list hits on hits on those things, and so I'm I'm happy to see that that kind of bubbled up from this group, the kinds of things that I was expecting to see, um, and and really it's just about, and and I and I'll, and I'll get into that. I mean I can probably get into that a little more with with Kevin and, you know I don't know Mike and and Brendan you guys sit on council and you're active in that group. Do you have a sense a general sense of Funding. I mean, there's departments that we pay for. There's debt services and things like that. Are are, are there monies left? You know, grants aside, because we, we have to look for money to help with all of it. But do you think that there's money each year that we can put towards this program in, in some of the projects that are coming out of it? I would think so. Mm -hmm. I think I think it would be a matter of selling it. Yeah, and saying you know, and saying to the staff, look, you know, this this is going to be a big benefit. Yeah, 
and and we need we need eighty nine thousand dollars to this is going to be a big benefit. It's going to really help you know the future and help the present. Mm -hmm. You know, and it fits it fits the bigger plan. Yeah, I mean, and I think there'd be money for that. I can tell you, Clayton's very frugal. Mm -hmm. As everyone knows, everyone wears many hats in this city. We're not yeah. like you know many yeah. of our neighboring cities. It's we're very very frugal, but we also were very tight on money. And it's not yeah. that there's not going to be a lot of fluff sure. projects passed, mm -hmm. if any. And we just don't have we don't yeah. have the yeah. extra money. Mm -hmm. I think mean, a big thing also would be selling it to Kevin to work into the budget. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's, that's you know we I mean my whole time here you know when the budget comes up I mean yeah we have we've had questions for him and things like that but you know you look at the job Kevin does we all kind of put a lot of trust in him we look at him as hey this looks good um, yeah there's a few things to go over but overall it's it's like hey you know keep on with good work so I think selling him into figuring out things in the budget to, to work them in it would be one of the biggest things that's a timing issue for him too well to right budget. And, and i know we have a capital improvements program i think a lot yeah. of this will fit in to that mm -hmm. um, so it's just it's kind of prioritizing things on this list and putting those in in the, the capital improvements yeah. program is, is there an expectation though stemming from this committee that whatever the suggestions are that they'll try to work on them and fit them into the budget so i mean it seems to be that if there's no expectation of trying to implement the implementation plan then it's just not really being implemented you understand yeah, what i'm saying I hear so, what you're saying yep so they ought to kind of have some thought to let's try to get some of these projects done yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, and Ke and I mean this group of just even begin becoming what it is was approved by council mm -hmm. unanimously. Yeah. Right. Um, so I think there was that. You know, we know that we're not going to have the city resources, and then also you know citizens put a lot of time and effort into something that it's like, okay, that was nice. Mm -hmm. So uh, right. we we, yeah. we want we. Look, I'll just say we want to come away from this group with some of these things that we're going to do okay. yeah. some of these things it. we can't you know we can't do now because of whatever the cost or yeah. you know where it fits in the timeline and these different things but some of these things we want to do and let's and again to simplify if we have 20 you know let's try to find some let's find the ones that we can do that we can you know potentially afford or get funding for yeah and and do because I, again I think that's you know I think that's what the residents ex expect I think people you know, like to see something going on. Mm -hmm. What if I could ask what um, are potential funding sources? I mean I know it comes from grants mm -hmm. and taxes, right? Mm -hmm. What I mean are those just the primary ones, the only ones, or are there other fundraising type things that can be done or what is, what's the funding sources? Now we've got to throw loans out, debt service, because okay. um, um, cities do do that, but right. um, and I'm not as familiar with, you know, any fundraising efforts for, for city type projects, but I'm sure there, it, that's been done. Most of it would be grants. That That's how that's how most cities fund things. Uh, to Mendy's point, she was, we've talked about the sidewalks. And again, Seth and I talked about this. I don't know very many details about this, but there, there's a grant, for instance, that improves walkability to a school. Mm -hmm. So if you live within a mile of the school, let's say, I'm not, again, I'm not sure that's the exact wording, but mm -hmm. if you live within a mile of the school, we could probably apply for a grant and we could, and we could use, this, you know, and say, look, you know, these kids can walk to school if they had sidewalks. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we may be able to get some money for something like that. There's all kinds of stuff out there, but it's just a matter of oh, honing in on what we it. want to do right. and okay. then and then try to get it. And you know, and I'll tell you these pla these these places that, that dole out the money, they're like everybody else. They're very selective and they're 
Yeah. 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 Well, I would assume writing a grant, it would have to be a multi-year grant or the expectation of not receiving the funds until sometime in the future. So as we score these, if we're looking at funding sources, would we have to push the, that time frame out? Probably not, not very far out. It's usually stuff, you know, and, and a lot of times there's also an expectation of a grant, like, hey, you got it. Uses within yeah. a couple right. of years, depending on the project. But you got to write um, it, though. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's some, and there's times, it, and we do it here all the time. There, uh, it's, sometimes it takes multiple tries. Sometimes they say mm -hmm. no once, twice, and the third yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's happened to us plenty of uh, times that, that we've received it finally on multiple yeah. tries. So. Um, yeah. Well, uh, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna like push us on this first one. Now. I'm yeah. gonna ask the question this way. So let's talk about walkable neighborhoods. Of those, um, of the project list that we came up with, let's see if we can get consensus around um, the most important one off the bat, the most important one or two of them off the bat. I'm gonna ask a 10,000 foot question. <laughs> That's about how much sidewalk I think we need. That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. And and is and we're ha everybody's having input to this now, right? So That's yeah. right. So that's Eric and I. Yeah, yep. everybody. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. So of, of those area of those project lists, which is the one that really kind of jumps out to say, God, this is this is um, this this is the one the one or two that we really got to we got to advocate to the council. <laughs> For me, there's one that sticks out above all else. Main Street. Every one of the rest of these, I think, takes takes a much lower, much lower. Um, some of them could organically grow, like for instance on National Road. Um, you know, I had we had the conversation. You know, the, the notes here. You know, say that make a convenient walkway to Spring out there to spread the Spring Lake folks. And I think I think if you talk to them, I think you'd get a completely different. <laughs> I can tell you, they don't want a sidewalk down there. Now I, I can't speak for every one of them, but that that's why I, I just lowered that down. Yeah. You know, uh, you know. Can, we, can I say this? I know we talked. I apologize, guys. I know we yeah. talked about short, mid, long. Mm -hmm. Could we have Barbara capture the conversation around each of these, and then if we have to come back and put some kind of a, you know. We, we, maybe at the end we could say, okay, what's what's short? Let's, let's just have a conversation first about each other. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Because I, I'm, mm -hmm. it's a little bit confusing on the on the metrics here. So, so Mike says Main Street sidewalks is the most important. Yes. Would would let's get some conversation around that. I think that's where we started as well, um, and particularly in our ranking. I, I think Main Street comes out what would be the highest. In our book, but should be the lowest if we're playing golf. Uh, the council <laughs> golf rule. Uh, and and to Mike's point, National Road was kind of the, the furthest out, uh, I believe, from our list, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but Main Street seems to be not only feasible but a short-term goal. And if we can research the right funding sources. Uh, a, a, very cost efficient project for us as well um, you know and, and i think it would have immediate impact i see people waiting on the bus every day mm -hmm. uh, on both sides of the street on, on areas that don't have sidewalks so um i think it would have immediate impact um, okay so but and all the rest you know you need to have to throw easement issues into the mix or a time issue or a cost issue but that one seems to have the least amount of potential hiccups okay and the sidewalks are already there for the most part yeah. it's just one or two blocks here one or two blocks there um, I know I spoke to who is uh, now the president of the board on the RTA he mentioned to me that there are funds available um, to at least start at the bus stop. So one stretch that kept, that I keep picturing is uh, 
from what's it, Westbrook up on the, I think it would be, I want to say, uh, west side of the main street and you know, crosses in front of Letty's and, mm -hmm. and everything there. Mm -hmm. There's one bus stop that I know for sure. If the city were to go to the RTA and say, hey, let's build a nice stop here with a cover, you put the funds for the initial portion of the sidewalk and the landing pad, and we'll just run the sidewalk either direction off of that. I know they would be interested in that, and um, okay. there would be funds available there. You know, by, you know, other spots on the street, I'm not sure how, how we would get it, but that was the extent of our conversation. You know, he said, we'll put a plan together and come see me. That was it. It there. We have, Do, we have that in our suggestions, right? Yeah. Potential funding, RTA. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Well, the other, the other, just throwing this out too, again, without doing much any more investigation on it, but you know, Main Street is a um, state route. Yeah. Yeah. So that would automatically tells me that there could be some yeah. potential help. You know, yeah. from the south, whether or not they work on sidewalks, I don't know. Right. Can I just ask this question for everybody? Is there a consensus that that what Mike and Eric have suggested here, Kit or Mindy too, um, is that okay? Like, well, could that mm -hmm. be the biggest priority? Yes, and then, I think so. And then, would you suggest? And I don't want to make it so simple that we're not saying there might be a number two. If we look to the rest of those, is there some other project? listing there that is, you know, maybe Brendan as a council member, you've been thinking about this a lot, and there you have, but is there one that you're like, wow, that one's got to get done because it's just stupid that it's not done? You know what of I mean? Course, of course, summer suite. Um, <laughs> um, um, I mean, the other ones, you know, national, it, it's, I think we have an idea of what national road is maybe going to be potentially in the next, 10 to 20 years. Um, but again, a lot of that might also come, like Mike had said, with the, with the vet shop. You know, some more stuff come in, and you also ask them, like, hey, why don't you throw in that sidewalk in here as well, you know, to, to help us start connecting things. Um, For the most part, that would be the case, right? Yeah. If somebody develops a, yep. you know, it, that, that, that would go along with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. So yeah. that that's that's an ask that, that we do whenever we sit with a potential developer is is we, we tell them that we want a Maltese path. We've got the current standard for that is a ten foot path, so that gives two five foot lanes. I think that's a safer way to go um for passing and all of that. So they know up front when they have their preliminary or pre application meetings with us is that that's what we're gonna be looking for. Um let's see. Too. Absolutely. No, I yep. have a question, Charles, on this one. So, if this one is walkable neighborhood that we're looking uh -huh. at these main streets, does that kind of, I mean, is it really making the neighborhoods walkable? Yeah, I, I, I do kind of agree with that. And mm -hmm. that's why I, I like uh, Seth's addition, this one that says establish a sign route through existing neighborhoods. Um, to clarify, that would be through. I believe from Garber, that, that small section, not really small, there's a lot of houses there, from Garber uh, north on Main Street uh, between Garber and, uh, uh, what am I thinking, Old Salem, that corner there, is that, that was what, that was the way I understood your, your note addition to be. Yeah, I mean, I think we had a very aspirational goal of um, connecting the, the plat, the south, Eastern Platts um, from, we had talked about Taywood yeah. to Main Street along Old Salem with the idea being that eventually we want Main Street to potentially be a downtown for us. Um, and that's what Plan Clayton envisions. Um, it envi envisions a, a street where you might have two story buildings, uh, whether it be shops and restaurants, potentially how, you know, apartments or, or lofts, that kind of thing up in the upper level. Um, you've got sidewalk out in front, you've got parking on the street, you've got a road that's uh, um, a lot less speed. <laughs> so the, the idea and the aspiration of that is let's get, when, when we have that situation or let's work toward that future 
um, vision for Main Street of getting everybody access to, to Main Street. We don't have that right now, but it's going to take time. And, and I think getting um, walkability to Main Street is going to take time too. And so in that we saw major financial and, and other obstacles of especially the portion from Taywood to, to Garber, is that, well, can we, can we find a path through the neighborhoods themselves to get us to Garber? Because I think everybody thought that uh, Old Salem from Garber to Maine might be actual, you know, a possible or doable project for us. So, um, how, how would you state that in a, like an action statement for us to recommend to the council, kind of like Derek said? Well, I mean, what, what I'm envisioning is probably very similar to what's in Plan Clayton, but it's a little more current, and it and it it's from what this group is is hopefully going to come forward with is, um, you know, maybe something a lot like this this schedule in front of us or this spreadsheet in front of us that, you know, here are projects that we think we can do in the first couple of years. Or I mean, I mean the neighborhood connectivity. That's what I mean. The neighborhood uh, connectivity. Yeah, I think yeah. The way he has it listed yeah. is a is a good uh, way to say it broadly. Okay. Um, I think the only thing we need to add to what's stated there establish a sign route for existing neighborhoods. I think the only thing we need there are specifics. You know, this yeah. road to that road to this mm -hmm. road to that road. Okay. Yeah. I want, you know, I I kept getting on Google Earth and looking over from the bird's eye view and saying, well, there's no sidewalks in this little neighborhood right, right here, but I'm yeah. sure you know, plenty of those people in the neighborhood would walk on down to that uh, Randolph Plaza from on Main Street if they had a sidewalk connecting down to Main, but they, none of that entire neighborhood in particular between Old Salem and Garber, no sidewalks whatsoever. Yeah, right. And, and you know, I, I think it's certainly feasible to at least put them on one side of the street through that neighborhood. There's plenty of land too. I didn't see many houses up close to the road, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I would say based on my conversation with Mike and our subcommittee, Mike, I think you have a different take on it, that there there might be the sentiment of residents who don't have sidewalk now and don't really want sidewalk. Um, so, so how do you, you know, how do you rectify that? If 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 we truly do want to get the residents in those subdivisions eventually to Main Street. I, I use I use where I live up there because because the walk I think the walkable neighborhoods I think it applies strongly to the new new construction that's built. We build it to do that. The the to try to retrofit what we have I think is I think is going to be unrealistic. I'll tell you why. In, in, I use my little neighborhood over there in Valley Brook. There's no sidewalks. Well, there is sidewalks around the condos, mm -hmm. but there's none in, in any of the houses up there where I live. I can walk if I wanted to. I could walk to the Fiesta. You know, I, I mean, I could go out there and walk. You know, come right down out Seville, Honeybrook, down through that you know Gold Key Boulevard and all that flat down there. I could do it. I'm not going to ever do that <laughs> <laughs> because it's, right. it's really far right. and it's really. <laughs> And it's just not, and if it, and if I had the greatest sidewalk and a 10 foot path, I still wouldn't. And my, my question is, but you know what? You come in my neighborhood every single day, you see people walking. They walk on our streets. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I can just tell you, if you had a, if you came in and said, hey, we're putting, side, you know, we're going to do you all a big favor, we're putting sidewalks in your neighborhood, they're going to say no. So, so you know, it's not going to happen. Li living in suburbs, and while uh, it, it is evolving and changing mm -hmm. from you know, what, what you know, I grew up around here, so mm -hmm. it, and, it, and it does. There's a different feel for you know, kids and how things are done. But at the same time, you don't. You, know, you live in more of an urban area. You know that. Yeah, you're taking the public transit, but you're walking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Around in a suburb like this, it's never going to be a big thing, like you said. Yeah, you could do that. You're not going, I can you know, do it. But yeah. And no one I yeah. know is going to do it, frankly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just too far. Yeah. Well, would it be so part of the walkable neighborhood, though? I mean, you see a lot of people riding bikes or jogging and stuff yeah, like that. Right. So, or pushing the strollers while they're jogging. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, coming from that perspective, that might be where it would be more important than just thinking, I'm just going to walk the main street. 
Yeah. yeah. And, you know. Well, I, I mean, I agree. I, I think that that's where I think we go with the new stuff. But to retro, I mean, we we have our the plats are so big. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if we. I mean, I don't think. I don't think that's a twenty-year plan. Yeah, I think that's a fifty-year plan. That's I don't even think that people do. Do we have the um, thought that people want to walk down the main street, or do they just want to walk around in their neighborhood? Yeah, that's kind of that's a good question. So making it accessible to main street may be something that. I think maybe not people even close really to main street, but yeah, it would you know would. With my parents, would can would, would they walk all the way down to Main Street? And yeah, it's a couple minute drive. But how often? Even if there was, even if there was a nice, big open sidewalk down Old Salem to Main Street, how often would people? Plus, walk? if I if I walk down to La Fiesta, I'm going to Uber back. <laughs> <laughs> I think the long term plan. I wouldn't even consider walking to Main Street. What's that, Mandy? The long-term plan is that our main street is going to be a hub of activity. Yes. So right. people yeah. might want to walk down there when it becomes that, but that's a, you know, that's a long-term thing. I'm sure yeah. not going to get it done in five years. Yeah. Where, where I see the walk, the reason I still focus on main street, and again, we talked about this, what I, how I see that's walkable. You, I don't really, I don't know if you really call it a neighborhood, mm -hmm. but what I could, what I think in my vision of Main Street is you got parking in the back of these businesses, let's mm -hmm. say. So you park, you know, you go to the veterinarian, you go to the coffee, you walk over to the coffee shop, you walk over to the whatever, bookstore. you know, bookstore. Yeah. You have these small, you know, shops or businesses and, and that's where you see people congregating. As it is now, it's hard to envision. That. Mm -hmm. But that's the, right. that's the vision. You know, mm -hmm. if we could get a road diet, yeah. you know, get the racetrack mentality away, get a median in there, and get then you, I think you would have people walking up and down, you know, up and down Main Street. No one does that now. I think we're kind of, and this is a lot that this group has done throughout the whole time is. You know, we get these big ideas of like, yeah. hey, we'd love it if people could just walk from this end of right. to the other. Now we kind of realize, no, walkable neighborhoods is kind of within that neighborhood is the realistic. Thing. Yeah. So yeah. How, what do we do yeah. to that? Um, I was going to make a, a little bit of a point to that because I understand that folks in Valley Brook might not want to walk or be able to walk down the Main Street, but I think if we focus on those neighborhoods actually connected to Main Street, and that's kind of my mm -hmm. understanding of the, of the... Yeah, that's what we... Kind of a assigned group. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily for... Long distance. Me, but yeah. that particular neighborhood I mentioned between Garver and Old Salem, mm -hmm. down there, those people could potentially walk yeah. to Main Street without having to ever think of touching Old Salem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like that, I think that that's completely realistic um, to do without having everyone you know, on this side of table yeah. and walk down. Um, and, do and, do, and do you think they need a sidewalk to do that? That's well, I, I guess you know. I, I think in that neighborhood, yes, maybe not in Valley Brook mm -hmm. because it's it's just a lot different neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable walking down my road and I don't appreciate it when pedestrians are walking down the street and I live on Baldwin Hills and, okay. and we usually walk Glen Hills and mm -hmm. uh, Scott Hills that whole area and mm -hmm. back down to uh, uh, past Brendan's mom and dad's on uh, Skylark. Uh, Skylark. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of seeing people walk on the street and those neighborhoods I do think it is dangerous they are a little more narrow than what's in Valley Brook and, and the expectation I think is different too. Potentially more traffic as well. Yeah because right? Valley Brook's uh, an HOA right? Like, like a community like it's. I think the expectation for pedestrians in those neighborhoods are different for uh, a neighborhood that's connected to Main Street that's traditionally been a uh, uh, I don't know how you Thoroughfare? Yeah, like uh, that's not, might not be the exact same as, as Valley Brook. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little more traditional housing and folks who might be more likely to ride the bus. I don't know how many bus passengers there are in Valley Brook, or, yeah. but I would assume there's 
more likely to ride the bus if you're connected to Main Street than you would be if you lived in Valley Road. Yeah, maybe. But well, I think to an extent it's about the multimodal connections that we offer residents and, and maybe it is in every plat that that's true, but I, I think there is a safety aspect for those who do want to walk. Um, and I, I understand not everybody wants to walk. So, you know, maybe, maybe uh, doing a study and, and trying to prioritize those neighborhoods where, you know, sidewalks are important to the residents that are there and you know, would help them feel safer. And maybe they would use it. Kind of I thing, am, but, I'm open to that. Yeah. Okay. I'm a, I, I would mean, like yeah, to see a, a survey we target a neighborhood. Yeah, they like do. That, that little spot down there. Say, hey, what do you guys think about this maybe? I don't know, door knocking or, or, or just a phone call. Just say, hey, well, what would you think of this? And then maybe even a perspective from uh, a real estate value standpoint that would connectivity to Main Street for a neighborhood like that down there increase property values mm -hmm. or at least increase mm -hmm. curb appeal for a potential buyer in the future. So you think that should be our number two? You know, can I do this, Mindy? Can I just, I'm going to try to put words in Derek's mouth real quick. But um, so if we could invest, so the, the Barbara's benefit, big one. I is thought I was the one who did that. Main Street, yeah. right? Yeah. Main Street's number one. Yeah. Second one is, and we'll throw this out there, investigate, investigate stronger connectivity in, in neighborhoods that are, that are in proximity to North Main. Fair? Yeah. What about okay. Taywood or Union? It's not the same kind of road, but it is, it's still a, what I would call a collector or uh, maybe even an arterial. Proximity is a word I think that could be, could be used in a couple different places. Do yeah. you think? Yeah. 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 I, mean, I don't know if you have to spell well, it out. Well, I mean, you don't have the commercial corridor that you have on Main, but I mean, there are some things. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry. On, yeah. On Union, yeah. you know, shops and, yeah. you know. Yeah. Store, that could, kind of thing. So that you could be. say Main Street and then any anywhere else, any commercial corridor where it made sense or something like that. Yeah. Is that I like, fair? I like that. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. You know, just one side note too on sidewalks. Again, it's, I, I always feel like I'm being a devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. but one thing about sidewalks in general, Kim knows this already, but you know, that homeowners are responsible for the sidewalks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So um, it's you know, it's been my somewhat limited experience with the council when you, if you, if we were to go and say, hey, we're going to put a sidewalk in, it's not going to cost you anything, and we maintain everything, and blah, 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 they're probably going to say, sign me up. But yeah. as soon as you say, you know, you have to maintain it, it, it's a completely different thing with a lot of people. And that's where I think, you know, the, I think if we do a survey, which we definitely would have to do before we just start doing that, I think um, we keep that in mind just to, you know, to word that so that they understand you know, what, yeah, well, so what that it we means. Get a good answer and not a biased answer. Yes. Yeah. Well, you would probably have to ask both ways. Yeah. You know, yeah. would yeah. you be in favor of it if you had to? Yeah. Or, you know. Kim, what's your perspective on value add from a real estate standpoint in terms of side communities or neighborhoods that have sidewalks? Well, I think it probably does add value because you're, you're looking at families moving out here. Mm -hmm. And if the kids can't ride their bikes up and down yep. the street or, you know, mm -hmm. roller skate or whatever they mm -hmm. want to do, it's, um, it's less appealing. Mm -hmm. Especially in these suburbs type houses where there's not all the land and stuff like that. So, yeah. I think it would be helpful. Now, is it um, necessary? I, mean, I don't know. People are here without them, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do, do we have to, do, is it, do people know, do, do we have to put in here that any new development would have sidewalks or do people know that that's going to, is that, is that a part of the deal? It's um, an expectation that we set as a staff when we meet with developers that are interested in Clayton. It's a, it's a standard book that you all already have though, right? Is that what you said? We have, so we have, um, we now have construction standard drawings that show our path and our sidewalk, kind of our steep sections. Um, but developers, when they come in, they, they're interested in land in Clayton. They want to know 
um, what, what kind of trouble are we getting ourselves into? What are we going to have to pay for? What are we going to have to put in? What's the process? So we tell them all of that up front. Um, you have to do a traffic study. You know, you're going to throw out a multi-use path um, along your frontage, that sort of thing. And, and so they know that up front and they, you know, they make their decision. It, it doesn't turn away most developers. They, they expect that. Well, don't they see that everywhere else? <clears throat> they do. To a Absolutely. Degree. Yeah, Absolutely. And, and so, you it's know, not just us. Yeah. It's fact, not just us. You know, I'm just going through some newer developments around the Dayton area. Yeah, I've seen a mix. Uh, a friend of mine lives in uh, Springboro. They're brand new Ryan home development, probably 10 years old or so. I don't know if there's any sidewalks uh, in there. There's all medians and um, some weird things. And then I actually drove through the one going on in uh, the DDC is running in the Ryan's building in Huber. Yeah. Um, and that one, yeah, that was side, that seemed to be sidewalks yep. all through. So maybe it just kind of depends on the neighborhood where it's going um, there. But, you know, I, I like our idea of, hey, let's, if we're going to build new, try to make that interconnected neighborhood of, with all those things. Can we, is everybody okay with that? Yeah. 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 So that's the third one. Third one is. Uh, all new development. All, all new should have sidewalks. Yeah. And then, and then the fourth one, Barbara, is we're all going to walk from Mike, from Mayor Mike's house to Lafayette. <laughs> <laughs> and Uber back. It's <laughs> a group outing. Get a bus. <laughs> Can we move to number two? Do we feel like we talked that through? No. I think so. Uh, again, I think it's. I think they're great ideas. I think you know, I'd love to see nice, big, wide, safe sidewalks everywhere. But again, the record and, is outside of Main Street. Do we do we see the others in a, a sidewalk infill program? I mean, is that do we? Is there a consensus for that? I, I think we leave it in. Yeah. I mean, why? It doesn't mean we have to do it, but yeah. it gives us you know keeps the idea on the table. Yeah. Do we have to do anything else with these other entries? Um, I wouldn't say that we would have to. I mean, that's my opinion, but um, tell me, maybe people disagree with that. They, they, they kind of tied, I mean, you can kind of put them in bunching in together. Yeah. You know, the construct sidewalk, sidewalk construct field. sidewalk. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if we were ever to ever put down on paper some far out there uh, project that would be really, really nice, but seems completely unfeasible, uh, I think that would be. Taywood to Maine. Uh, Along Old Salem. Salem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that would probably have to be a multi use path, something like what's down uh, yep. 49, 49 or, mm -hmm. or 40. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's, there's probably sections we'd have to get very creative from an engineering I mean, standpoint. Uh, yeah. There's some Randy generous donor ever came yeah. down and just laid a bunch of money on the That's table true. and said, here, do with it what you want. <laughs> <laughs> and we can shave a little bit. Buy some houses and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go to no oh. gas stations. Uh, it seems to be the consensus on one of the Facebook groups mm. for the Northmont area. Everyone complains when the gas station goes. Oh. No gas station. Well, Except when you need gas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're the same people are the first in line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's move on to Central Cores. Um, Brenda Davis, let's um, just ask the question again. What's the somebody throw out what the most important, the most important one or two? Well, uh, if you almost look at one through four on here, they kind of go together. So, I the way we had kind of we just kind of, we didn't really put like we we just kind of put them in order of importance how we did things, and then kind of said, well, you know, one you look at, you know. Well, I guess, uh, you know, you have street furnishing program is one and then standard book for street furnishing is three on here. And then directional and district signage and then the standards book. You kind of look at all, all those kind of go together. So maybe simplify things and it, it really having one through four is kind of all as one and putting that as a top, pri as a top priority and probably a very easy thing to do. Yeah. Can you? Can you can you say it, Brendan, in like a way that again, like you know, a way that like, hey, we're here's what we're asking council to to do. I guess would be to you know create 
a street furnishings and directional and district signage program and standards. And I would say to clarify the the uh, some so some of that's planning uh, effort and, and that stuff I've started and we'll, we'll continue to do to kind of put that together for for the city. Um, so, so I think the books are, um, are things that I will I will be putting together anyway and we'll have as a, as a tool in our toolbox. The programs, you know, as I see it, would be a phased program to start purchasing some benches and trash cans and ash urns and uh, dog, you know, litter receptacles and things like that. And, you know, picking areas in the city to start, you know, installing those things. So, um, you know, I think that's what the program, in my mind, that's what the program would be. Mm. And, and street signage and wayfinding, I mean, that's another program, um, again, that it, I think is phased and, and we slowly, so when new developments come in, they're going to have these standards and, and they're right. going to know the expectation, but it would be the retrofitting, you know, of, of street mm -hmm. signs through the city. I know we've done some of that, um, you know, but the, with the wayfinding as, as Main Street becomes a district and, and kind of what, what's envisioned and planned Clayton, so sort of doing some wayfinding there. Um, we'd like to, we're setting up a district in, in old, the old village and, and maybe doing some district and wayfinding signage there and in other areas that are, are critical throughout the city. So mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I would see it. No, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so those are all kind of connected. And, and again, I just, just for Barbara benefit, create a street furnishings and do it again. <laughs> create a street furnishings. Yeah. Yeah, um, create yeah. street furnishings and directional and district pro, um, uh, pro yeah, sign programs and that, or I guess first would be the standards, excuse me, yeah, first would be the standard book and then implementing the program. We, when we discussed this, when Seth and I met and discussed this, we felt like all of this is doable. Yeah, we can okay. do this mm -hmm. quick. Okay, and yeah. with all this we can do quick. Yeah, well, we can. In house, most, a lot of it. Yeah, and a lot of it in house. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. so, Barbara, so it would be super. In house. That we felt like that was doable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super costly. Because oh. kind of after you know Central Core is when we first met. Yeah. It's kind of we identified Central Core as like cool. How would we do it? You know, <laughs> we kind of felt like are we done with what we're you know kind of our, our thing, and then it's like well okay, what do you actually do with it here? So um, you know, and then that branched out into that. Um, probably then the next thing we had said was, you know, critical intersection crosswalk improvement program, um, which is like we uh, discussed er earlier, which is already happening um, along 49 over the next two summers. Mm -hmm. 49 and unions getting completely overhauled. And I believe that was safety, it was safety grants that did these, mm -hmm. correct? I think so. So yeah, from safety grants of improving that intersection, uh, 49 Union this summer and the next summer is 49 in Westbrook. So um, that's something kind of already going on. Okay. Um, and I think you know it's good for the city to continue uh, to look at that of critical intersections, and it kind of talks, you know, goes back into you know walkability. Yeah. Here um, mm -hmm. because yeah, right now. I'm, yeah, you're not crossing 49, uh, <laughs> really in either, either place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 um, but, you're running yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but that's going to happen. There's going to be, uh, the crosswalks and, and the crosswalk line lights and things like that that are, that are coming in those. So, um, that's going to connect with, connect the city more. Just out of curiosity, it might be a little bit off topic, but is there any, plan or talk or discussion about what goes on in the uh, plaza there behind UDF. Um, you know, like it, it could potentially be a, a nice spot. You know, we have two gas stations there and I don't know what the zoning or building or the zoning code is in the rest of that area, but I've always seen that as a, as a wasted opportunity. Um, and, you know, 
I say that as someone who's not willing to put any money down to invest in a business back there. But, uh, so I have no skin in the game. But that being said, I don't know. Yeah. That's difficult. And at first I'll say, and you know this is where yeah. we have been advised by, by our city attorney not to discuss some things yeah. going on that has been recently in the news. Um, <laughs> there. Um, yeah, <laughs> the last email we got was a lot more than two times. Uh, but um, I mean, that's obviously private business right there. Both of those um, separately owned. Yeah, there's uh, we we haven't really I haven't seen anything really of kind of the goal of, of right there just because you know who knows. I mean, you know, it, it, yeah, it'd be nice if someone came in and offered UDF and Monahan like, hey, we want. We're going to be a couple million bucks for this, and we want to put in something brand new. That's probably a one, fairy one tale. Thing about, one thing I can say, other Brendan said that perfectly. <laughs> but one thing I can say on the, um, I actually know the two people that own, there's two partners that own the, the plaza, and they also own the land up, like toward Meadowbrook, yeah. the house up on the hill there. They recently bought the house across the street. On the other corner of Union and it would be the southeast corner of Union and 49. They're, they're real estate investors. They're both characters. They're both good old boys who think they got a million dollar property there and they won't put a penny into it. That and it's be. difficult. I mean, they own the property. So there's not much, you know, yeah, they'd sell it, but they're going to sell it. You know, we're, we're not buying. Like, oh, <laughs> next question: Are these? Are they they talk to the type of guys who would who would put in the sidewalk like the? Uh, no. <laughs> they are. They're the opposite of that, yeah. and uh, it's just it's unfortunate. But again, I mean, they own it, so that's what yeah, they do. Yeah, it looks it looks empty. I mean, it yeah. almost looks like uh, right. It looks like um, the Kmart lot mm -hmm. up there in Inglewood. Well, and, and that's what I. Well, that and there's the lot there in Trotwood, that big strip mm -hmm. on. We're comfy, it seems to be that those are just the type of owners in those mm -hmm. situations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of landowners, not to, that of undeveloped, yeah. there who, in fact, I mean that DDC was going to go in at Sweet Potato and Nash or in or in 48 and. Mm -hmm. Landowner turned around and said, "Oh no, we want more money per acre." And that was after they found out, "Oh no, it's actually going to, the bedrock here is going to make it harder for us to develop." Yeah, and they did. A lot of people just think, "Oh, I, I'm sitting on a coal here." Well, that's Fair, why apparently, like, the property owner behind the land behind my house was like that for a while. Now he's coming off of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we haven't. I've never seen anything really of a plan with the, with that, just because we know it's. It's it's not probably nothing's going to be new. The, I think the biggest fear of it being is completely unoccupied. There, uh, I will say this: there is a couple uh, where the seafood restaurant was. They're putting in um, basically two two restaurant concepts in, in that space. One is Lord of the Wings, uh, and the other is Bald Head Tones. And, and I, I don't know uh, the chefs that are coming in, but I'm. I'm hearing good things about them and we're excited you know we're working through you know signage and certificate of uh, you know occupancy for commercial new use down there but it's kind of exciting it's the Cantrells John and, and uh, Mark uh, I think it's Marquette uh, a couple that have a I think they have a s salon in Dayton but they're they're opening up you know, with these chefs, two 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 new restaurants there. Oh, so good. That's great. We're pretty, we're yeah. pretty excited yeah. about it. That's great. I, just, yep. I wasn't sure if that would be a uh, place where we could kind of. It's a nice spot. Yeah. It is a good location. Mm -hmm. Somebody yeah. needs to do some advertising to bring in some business. Yeah. Well, I hadn't done an updated sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, that, that's, that, I'm glad to you know, hear. Yeah. You know, yeah. Something. And yeah, high we're traffic hopeful. area. Um, if the right things went in there, yeah, mm -hmm. could you yeah. Yeah. do something that the standards book addresses maybe regarding at least like a sign? Like, are there little things that we might be able to do with the plan to start putting pressure on property owners like that? Like, hey, you, you have to update your sign to reflect the businesses that are in 
I don't know if that's something we can do. I know it's a building code how, issue. How's that, how's that work for existing? I mean, I know like when new when new stuff comes in, and that can become a heated. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, I, it, that, uh, that's that's a private <coughs> negotiation between right. the owner and the le and the lessee. I mean, where I have business going in, I I would demand a panel on their ground sign. Um, you know, I wouldn't sign a lease, but I, I don't, I don't understand an owner who doesn't keep their sign updated with the current occupants. Uh, I, I know that the local building codes all have certain signage requirements. So I don't know if that's. I mean, we definitely have standards in terms of sizes. Um, building code would get into more structural issues and wind loads and things like that, but. Uh, we have max area and, and all of that for you know, the different commercial areas. Of town. I mean, I wonder if we could add in. That's an interesting point. I wonder if we could add in something like, I mean, I don't know what the language is, but make it current at least. You know, I mean, instead if it, of if it, if it is an an in disrepair, business. I don't think there's a lot we yeah, can, so that, we can really say about here. it. Yeah. yeah, I have a client who manufactures signs. He's got 95 jurisdictions. Building code saved on his oh my gosh. system somewhere, so I'm going to give him a call. And ask yeah, him. Oh, heard a, of that yeah. or it seen would, that? It would be an interesting question. Where there's anything like that. Yeah, honestly, it's an interesting answer. question for sure. I don't know if you can require some businesses to do some type of landscaping or improvements to their property, like the, down on Salem when. Um, the hospital moved down. They had a spot um, by Clefton here. I mean, north, south, east, mm -hmm. west. Of, can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I am directionally illiterate for real. So <laughs> just tell me left or right. <laughs> but anyway, when they um, moved over there, they were required to put in the, the fencing and the, you know, the stone. Um, with the fence and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and some um, trees, I think. So it seems like there is possible that there's some requirements to make the lot look nicer. Well, we definitely have standards for that for for non-residential, you know, for commercial development, um, especially on Main Street. There's there's even stronger standards, but um, you know, there's so definitely. Existing versus new. Well, that's yeah, it. That's, that's it. That's it. That's so, yeah. Well, that's yeah, it. Sure. So when you when someone takes over a space or right. tears down and builds new, they well, have to I mean, comply. Well, I mean, property inspectors go out and ask people to keep up their houses routinely. Yeah. That's um, true. There's property maintenance for residential. Um, absolutely. Uh, and, and I would say we probably would do the same for commercial if it was in disrepair. Mm -hmm. Um, but to, to go out and say, well, you've got to improve. Yeah, it just looks um, ugly, so you got to do yeah, something that's not really. You, <laughs> you, you, care that. you, you take care of it. There's no weeds, but we don't like the look of it. Um, that, that would be hard to do. So let me, let me double back here. We said the first four are doable. Um, and, and, and Barbara, I think I kept you there. Okay. okay. Second one, um, uh, we talked to, Brandon talked about the crosswalk improvement program. Mm -hmm. the, uh, Brendan, you said you, you felt like that was kind of on its way, or in the right direction. Yeah, it, you know, currently being Im implemented, and I think will be something in the future. Because a lot, a lot of those, man, we're getting through safety grants. You know, intersections. <laughs> it's the, again one of the easiest ways to get, get grants for that. Do you need um, to specify, like, I mean, do you feel like there's a place? Are you worried? Are you worried that there's a place where that that, that needs to happen? That the council needs to say, "Come on, that's where we got to do this." That, that may not happen. I mean, at the speed that you're talking about. Anything um, on Maine? I mean, we've uh, as far you know, there, there's always with like uh, Oak and Wanger is a big spot, and that's just because of the increase in traffic that's going on. Mm -hmm. Now, issue also there is it's border, it's the border road. Okay. So um, that would be. Obviously, critical intersection that needs to get improved. Now, I don't know when you get in a crosswalk, that's a little difficult at that point because there's no, and I, I don't know if you might see sidewalks going down that. That's a, that's a little difficult. Um, I mean, Union and Old Salem, again, 
you've got a few neighborhoods, you know, like yours right by there, but then you get into like where the church is and then going uh, the other side of that, you got not uh, the other, the other Boy Scout uh, occupied church. So it's kind of, you know, looking at it from a cross, from a crosswalk standpoint, that'd be kind of the two, two okay. big ones. I'll say this on Hope, we do have two phases planned for, for mm -hmm. reconstruction of yeah. Oak Road and uh, in the intersection I Hope and Winger is, is going to get some kind of an improvement. Yeah. Um, in, 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 when the, when the <laughs> roundabout. Come on, Tim. Roundabout. That's right. Tim won't want that, but I want the roundabout. And, and I think you'll see, I think you'll see uh, multi-use path included. Um, and obviously there'll, mm, there'll need to be crosswalks, right but that'll be put in. <laughs> that'll be put in at the project. That's right. We'll, we'll put a we'll put statue of Tim Borman, but that'll get him to, to not have an issue with it. Yeah. 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 Tim Borman statue. That's a town on 48 that has that little buses. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so Say on Smitty and Mandy. I said you have to worry about if you do a roundabout getting the buses around there. Oh, that's true. true. Right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> true. Old we'll make it bigger. Yeah. 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 You got to have a design for the bus. Bus go down that way. Oh, oh, a lot yeah. of us. Well, school yeah. bus. Oh, school yeah. bus. Yeah. 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 That being yeah. close to yeah. all of them. What's all specified? Right. Yeah. I'm thinking about RPA. Yeah. No, it's all school buses out there. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you another intersection, and I don't know if it fits this. As a matter of fact, it, it probably doesn't fit this, but I, uh, one intersection that we have that is dangerous, I believe, is Taywood and Westbrook, Westbrook yeah. where you go, you make that jog to Salem Bend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, the other side's not our jurisdiction. Right. So that, again, throws it there, but yeah. that is, that's a... That was already engineered years ago, and that fell through. Yeah. Yeah, because they were going to close people. Salem Bend and take it around and behind the cemetery and yeah. put a light and all that. Yeah. That felt pretty good. Yeah, but anyway. Do you want to specify that, Mike? I don't think so. I think that's out. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Yes. and that's kind of, you don't have much pedestrian. No. Again, it's kind of looking at, you know, for traffic. For what we're traffic, doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because it's, it's kind of a hidden. Yeah. 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 Right. Start pulling out, and here comes somebody. We, we did go. We did go in with Trotwood, and we're is it starting next year? Westbrook is basically getting repaved, and that was a grant that we both went in together and, and we achieved. Oh, okay. Uh, so for a good stretch of, of Westbrook Road, is it the whole? Is mm -hmm. the whole road? It's from I think forty nine to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Forty nine so, to. Yeah. The other way, that's great. Yeah, we're heading 49 yeah. east. Yeah. I will say we're in preliminary um, discussions right now, but the council's had a workshop with DDC for a single family uh, development of Westbrook and Union. And uh, what they're showing on their plan is a multi use path for the entire Westbrook frontage um, for the 20, 25 acre lot or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I I mean, the planner, I me, mean, I'd love, I'd love to see multi-use path all, all, all down that stretch. I mean, really, any main road in, in the city would be great to have it. But um, you yeah, know, yeah, it'd be nice if they build it. Yeah. Well, that that right now that's the plan. So, yeah. so, they're a developer. They're uh, uh, design, develop, construct. Okay. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Where are they out of again? Uh, I think they're just down in Centerville. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if they were local or if they yeah, were we're local. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Let's let's end up on this on the second bucket of work here. Let's end up on the talk about the, the speed study. And I think that was really around 40, 48, correct? Mm -hmm. It's 48. I think it's national. Mm -hmm. National. Yep. And then gosh, maybe Westbrook. <laughs> yeah, as we're talking about it. So what, what, what type of cost goes into the speed study? I, mean, I don't have an an exact quote, but um, I, I'm picturing that one being south of ten thousand. You know, to, to to work with the city engineer to to perform that, and it's really it would depend on scope, how many corridors they're looking at. But um, you know, almost without a study, I think most of us could probably <laughs> select you know three or four different areas where the speed should come down. 
you know, Main Street for sure, national by the schools, really all a national. I mean, if you, if you look at what Inglewood is, it's 35, I think, the entire Inglewood yeah. stretch. So, um, especially if we're thinking about having some commercial out there eventually. I think, yeah, the national, and, and the schools. National, when you kind of got, you know, what, I don't know, it's called, you know, Northmont Row there, when you, you know, going from Crestway, yeah. Towards Englewood, I mean, you got you know the high school, middle school, yeah. and then you get into those North Clayton, but then you got the Y, yeah. and then the North Mont <laughs> Club clubs, and w with all that, it, you know, you've got a lot of things there, and, and to maybe even changing up the, even though it's two different jurisdictions, yeah, um, ha having a lot going on within that to, to have it at thirty five, yeah, um, seventeen year old me would kick my my own ass right now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we've got a few, a few take, reminders take, from our local PD. Take, taking away the high school yeah. drag strip, right? Um, yeah. So, but I think, you know, that row would, would be, I think that'd be probably the easiest uh, yeah. to make, to look at since there's a lot of conjoining, yeah. uh, especially when you deal with families, kids, yep. and things like that. Um, when you, you look at the development that almost was at National and Haber, um, they were going to do a multi use path the whole length of um, you know, Haber Road, it was 1800 lineal feet. And the, the idea was a crossing to the south side of National where you could access all these different things on the existing path. Mm -hmm. you, you can't have 50 miles an hour in, in that area if you're cross if you're having people cross national roads so. and and it could be like i was uh i forget what it was called, just about some like sidewalks earlier of kind of that ops you know it's not if you build it they'll come i think it's it's kind of you know when development comes in then maybe if we already have you know if we said okay we had we did a speed study and right maybe included in that speed study you say okay here's what we're kind of envisioning for sure. right here so if that happened what would be the ideal you know speed yeah right here um you know so then when those come in we, we would make those those yeah. proper adjustments we'd already be ahead of the game well and then with um, village in north clayton you're just gonna have so much more activity yeah. on the front edge the national front edge yeah there's already when a it gets of, built out yeah. there's yeah. already a lot of activity there right especially yeah. especially around the things at the school yeah but it's going to increase because you more residential is coming in you get coffee if you get coffee or restaurants. I mean, it's really gonna yeah. you know, see an uptick. So yeah, plus, oh, and plus hopefully we get a light there. Hey, yeah, yeah. You know, we've mm -hmm. been trying that for yeah. And I think years. that again, yeah, that was one thing. Yeah, people you need a light there. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> if the development comes in, it's get a good chance. Seth actually yeah. had a great idea on on all that. I, I just wish we this could come. I wish this could happen. I don't know if it's feasible or not, but <laughs> we were talking about the. Um, Doing the multi-use path and getting across, you know, 40 there, and I think the tunnel <laughs> is a great <laughs> idea. Yeah. I mean, where you lived before, they had you had those. There, there were areas in Columbus for sure, um, and, and I worked um, for an architecture firm in, in the city of Dublin, and they 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 did those all over the city. And they're not cheap, uh, but they're very they're very safe, right? So. You don't so have to worry about the crossing. Yeah. 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 I know Dublin's a very newly developed <laughs> mm -hmm. city in that. And, Definitely. Yeah. And, and uh, they've got bike paths everywhere and, right. and, and they and they do have a lot of tunnels. So, yeah. Wow. Yep. Build one. People sure. like it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's. Uh, um, oh, uh, <laughs> I just envision what the people around there would lose their shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <yeah. tunnel>. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that would be the nicest thing. <laughs> um, that's it. <laughs> Can we say that? You know, I'm just going to throw this out there because I think, like, let's take 48. I mean, one of the reasons you talk about doing that is not is not. I mean, one of the reasons you talk about reducing speed is because it would make it safer for people to walk, right? Correct. I mean, yeah. is that and more desirable? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. For the wall. Can we state that in here? I mean, just because I think sometimes people say, oh, like, you know, you're saying you're 17 years old, and you know, it's like, why are you making me 
Why are you bugging me out like that? But um, okay, I, I wouldn't mind if we could put that in there and say we'd be looking at at speed studies if we could re reduce speed to encourage more pedestrian activity on major thoroughfares or something. You know, whatever. would that also include you know to encourage more businesses to come in because mm -hmm. you you do look at yep. uh, areas like you know that's what yep. businesses don't go a lot of times. You know, I mean, look look at forty nine. Mm -hmm. you know for the outlook yeah. right and there's a reason there's not a lot of businesses yeah. through there it's because you know it's 50 55 uh, going through there so mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's not if you, look at the, if you look at the project description it does have somewhat of that in there you know future course developments where there will be significant interaction between pedestrians bicyclists and motorists yeah yeah mm -hmm. true right that's a good point yeah. we could just we could just steal that language <clears throat> I mean, I kind of feel like a a speed study, you know, of looking at things. If we were to do it, to look at things currently, and then also make sure it's tied it into who's ever doing it to say, okay, here's what we potentially want to do in this area. And so, what would need to be done with that? Yeah. I think we we looked at this before, but the forty eight one, we might be able to get like Cal from Paul Gruner on that, right? I mean, since it is a state road. And, I don't know. I don't know. Well, to me, just just a, 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 a thought too. Like all of these, like I said, I think all of these are doable. And when you combine these back to what we think the fir our first bucket there, yeah. To me, my head still keeps going back. To Main Street needs to be our focus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I think to me, I think that's where all this stuff needs to start. Yeah. Because it's visible. Yeah. And it is, it's really vital that we get that going. I mean, the, the, the North Clayton stuff, is, I think, is going to get going kind of not really on its own, but it's, yeah. it's right. on its way. Yep. Down, we're not on our way down there. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, we, we're just not. That's right. true. But did anybody see the article in the paper last week about what the city of Dayton is doing for <clears throat> North Main Street? Yeah. Where they're going to take it from four lanes down to three lanes yep. okay. to slow everything down? And they're going to, was it like a two or three mile stretch yep. closer to downtown, but they're going to be starting the summer, redo all that? Okay, I didn't right. see that. Yeah, I, didn't I think you're right, Barb, for the same reason. Right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, slow people down because there's too many issues with people getting hit trying to cross oh, the road and things like that. Well, they're, they're yeah. expanding those sidewalks, mm -hmm. like on Jefferson, I think it was, or I think they're somewhere, they put the sidewalks like right in the middle of the street. I'm like, why are you walking this way out here? But I think Main Street too, um, new developers can pay for a lot of our pie in the sky ideas like a multi-use path mm -hmm. or sidewalks or whatever in those areas that aren't developed. Main Street, I think it's going to be hard to get someone to purchase the property and provide the infrastructure, you know, where in a place where there's already some infrastructure. Yeah. And there's already some buildings and houses. It might need more of a push from our own pockets as opposed to mm -hmm. a developer unless we get a new, you know, someone moving into that lot there in front of um, oh, Stillwater. Still still mm -hmm. yeah. Well, if you go back to the veterinarian, I don't know, if, I don't think we put any money in that. No. Oh, it was yeah. all private. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it was, I think that was, we, we built that in as, you know, Look, you, you, you build to this standard, and we want this stuff, including landscaping yeah. and all that. I believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and, and and that will be retained in the the new code that's going to come before council in, in late May. But um, maybe you know, bells and whistles. I, 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 not, but. I think for the vision, you know, potential downtown on Main, uh, it's going to take a lot of city maybe controlling land and assembling it. To, to, to where you have enough to really kind of do what, what, what is the main street section, right? What does that look like? And so um, putting enough land together and, and then attracting the right developer to, to, to do maybe a block and, and to, to put it all together. And I'm, I'm thinking the multi-story building, 
two-story building, the sidewalks, the parking on the street, yeah. I, mean, I think could, could, could just be sort of like the catalyst, you know. But you can I do a lot small. In fact, a couple weeks ago, Derek and I were up in uh, downtown Troy uh, yeah. for something on a Friday night, and I, I, I'm up there, and it's like, God, I would kill for this. Their downtown I mean, is fantastic. You know, oh, just yeah. now that's an old. They, that's old. It's been old and, long, and, they, <laughs> and how they revitalize it, and it's like, oh God, I would kill for something. I mean, when you drive yeah. to like West Milton, downtown there, just like an old downtown that was yeah. so nice. It's in a that traditional a prime, uh, strip, and the North Mountain area, I mean, the closest we have is kind of you know that little downtown Inglewood uh, area, and even that's kind of. Yeah, there's not much for the more to go on there. So my question was: Is that thinking about that um, on North Main Street to looking at Troy and like Xenia too, kind of mm -hmm. have the same kind of? Does it even does it even seem feasible that that could happen on our Main Street? Yeah, I think a good comparison actually might be Fairborn. Think, of, think about how what downtown Fairborn has become over the last five or ten years. Because not too long ago, that was a whole lot of uh, rundown area, um, and not that ours is is run down, but it's so just jagged and all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of current, you know, Fair had a lot of current infrastructure there. But I think it's looking at it in that comparison, it's probably it's it could be feasible. Mm -hmm. I, I think in, in uh, no. I, I think I understand what you're saying as far as like, you know, it is what it is, you know, we're not going to have a square or anything like that. But if you look at something like, don't laugh at this comment, but if you look at Oakwood, you know, they have a lot of shops there mm -hmm. and they, and the way that they've got it set up, some of it I don't like that well, but the way they ha they've taken what they had mm -hmm. and made, and made it work. And you got a lot of nice, that's kind of the, <laughs> Things I'd like to see along mm -hmm. those kind of businesses. That, that makes it, no, that vision. Yeah. I can, yeah, I yeah, can see that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just the, yeah. the, with the with the statue and the roundabout. Oh uh, no! That, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, yeah. That, okay. So that's mm -hmm. what I was thinking yeah. initially when I read the report. And I'm like, I don't know how that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. We, yeah, but it, 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 not to say like you need to have one big anchor, mm -hmm. but I think if there was like. So the mention of controlling some land and then mm -hmm. if we have the right developer come in and say like okay we're going to build you know what fits into your standards of a kind of building that's going to hold you know hold multiple businesses mm -hmm. um yeah. have residential in it have that in just a, a couple of, i mean i forget the the intersection but it's it's where that rundown building is that we discovered might have been dumping chemicals a while ago oh, for right. you know you look at that little section right there and it's like god if if, if, if we had control of that mm. and someone came in and just here on each side built some nice things, they could uh, then it's suddenly like, okay, now we're starting to really build up. And you could change the perception pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. so here's yeah. so here's just one more thought. Okay, so why don't we I'd like to see this added to our recommendation, actually. It's a little bit out of the maybe scope of the bucket here, but why don't we start? Why don't we start yeah. getting some of the control? Because the thing is, again, you know, we're not in the real estate business. It's a city. We're not going to go out. We don't want to go out and just yeah, purchase. Like a, you are, well, I, <laughs> I, I it hadn't worked out too well for me. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, again, this is a, a question for Seth and for Jack. But I know we can get. I know we can acquire properties through the land bank. Yes. And there's a lot of property on North Main for sale that's pretty run down that cannot be out dollar. Yeah, and to the no, Port Authority. I think there's, yeah. I think we, should, I think if we recommend that, again, the council may or may not want to go this route, but I mean, I would push for this, that we get aggressive on this. Because we own a couple properties mm -hmm. along North Main now that are nice, but not, so what? You know, no one's done anything with it yet. But that the the building that you're talking about there, we buy it day one, we knock it down. Where yeah. is this at now? What building? Uh, uh, I think Laura's lot. Laura's yeah, lot. That's it. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 And my question then would be I'm venturing down the rabbit hole a little too far still, but 
there is money to remedy uh, ground zones and things yeah. like that. And I, I don't yeah. know if government ownership of the property can make that more accessible or not. I don't. Well, the other thing is we think yeah. it's a ground zone. We don't yeah. know for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Rick always said that. That's why I kind of passed You guys on talking about brown, brown <laughs> field, like a brown yeah, field? Yeah. It's yeah. contaminated soil, is that what you think? We, yeah. Uh, the, the thinking uh, one, is? Well, one time there was a gas station on there. And the, according to some other people, they, you know, they... If it was an old gas station, it probably... Poured stuff out. There yeah. probably is contamination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's pretty like, typical. You can't yeah. build on old gas station lots for a number of years, right? You have to mitigate, and you have to basically clean, clean the... Disorder. Well, guess what? That Takes becomes time. our central parking, you yeah. know, yeah. or whatever. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I would, I would, I think that's a great idea mm -hmm. because maybe I don't know, Mike. How would you say it? Say something like, the "City ought to try to control key properties that have the highest return on investment." And I think, get, mm -hmm. I think we need to be aggressive. Yeah, more aggressive mm -hmm. on them. That's yeah. the, that's the. Let's put that under this. Well, is that party. something that could fit into an executive summary versus? Maybe we could explain it. Categories. Maybe we could just add, add on to it an executive summary. You know, mm -hmm. like it just kind of. But I think it. I think Mike's right, and I think that's could be pretty key. And it, and it wouldn't always have to be the most obvious parcels either. Sometimes, well, you know, which is quite. Well, I like the I like picking the worst ones, and that'd be the worst. Yeah, in my right. mind, You know, right. and, and knock it down. Uh, likewise, on the other side of the street, you know, there's a yeah, there's actually. You know where that car wash was and the old laundry and that stuff. I mean, those those buildings really aren't going to ever be used. To, yeah, let's face it. Yeah, yeah. yeah they need well, Derek and I talked about that early on. About we weren't sure where that fit, but code enforcement. You know who owns those? If we start, you know, code enforcement on those properties, maybe they'll want to ditch them and get rid of them. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I will say this. There's a gentleman that has been in contact with me. I, I think it's probably you're talking about the, there's a car wash and then a small strip center. Yeah. And he was wanting to put a, a semi truck trailer behind the buildings for storage. And we said, well, no, he can't do that. But I think he's wanting to put in a shed now or something for equipment, like for weed whipping and mowing and that sort of thing. So I don't know what is. His, his ultimate plan is, but I have recently heard, heard from the, I guess he's a new owner. I don't know. Well, well, it was recently for sale. I don't know yeah. if he's still I think, there, I think they're still for sale. Still is, yeah. It looks like they updated one of them. Or, yeah. I, mean, like car wash is I think he was thinking maybe office for the car wash building. I mean, just kind of doing a reno on that, but. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would. Tell them no. We're going to buy it. I would like that. That's exactly what I'm going right. with. It. I say we dissuade that yeah. and try to get try to get control of it ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can only figure out how to get the club up here. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, maybe. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. that's I like that. That would help. Does anybody yeah, know anybody? <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you said Oakwood, I can see that to it now. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> let's do, so it's seven forty, and I I I want to kind of respect people's time. I let's let, and, and Seth, let me ask you: if we tackled number three, and Seth indicated to me that June could be our last meeting, it, would we do we want to tackle number three and then come back and try to tackle number four in June and then have a wrap up meeting? Or in your heart of hearts, would you have you want us to want us to get through both of them? I, mean, I'm, I, I guess I would I would listen to what what the pleasure of this group is. I mean, we can come back in June. I, I was hoping to present kind of a, a draft plan and okay. an executive summary for, for everybody's comment in June. But I mean, do, do, does this group want would would you all be willing to continue into July? Um, and, and that would just push back. The presentation to council to, to, to August or to Mike and or what and if we decided if we could pick a night at the end of this month just to just to finish the fourth yeah month. I mean we could have part two and just kind of finish up try that I, I wouldn't be opposed to that and to be completely honest I think meeting together kind of helped uh, yeah flush mm -hmm. out some of these ideas I agree that, that, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's terribly difficult over Zoom it is. Yeah. 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 no it's, question I was kind of yeah I was kind of wondering is us meeting together, is that going to speed things up or is it, it could be the opposite? But this is all good. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'll figure it slow it down. Yeah. Mm. 
why don't we so let's get through the third one and then yeah. let's all let's, you know and then maybe we could look at our calendars and try to come back in two weeks or something for the last one well let me make this suggestion okay. just because we got through two tonight what okay if we save the last two and then okay. maybe seth can participate you know okay. later this month okay. since he's part of connected part yeah sure let's do it is that okay with everybody mm -hmm. all right I will be out of town until the 22nd of May. 22nd of May? Yeah. And then it's, yeah, the week of the 24th, now that's the week before Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. So yeah. that would be probably pretty good. Like the 26th or the 25th? So we're thinking uh, if we keep the Wednesdays kind of time frame, do we want to say the 26th that? Six o'clock again, or seven better? Are we talking May twenty sixth? May twenty sixth. Mm -hmm. Are we having a planning commission meeting? That would that would be the night of the planning commission. Planning commission would be the twenty fourth if we have one, right? Am I in the right month? May. I thought I was. Fourth is Monday. The planning commission would be the twenty fourth. Okay. Like twenty sixth. Yeah, Monday. Twenty yeah. fourth uh, uh, is a Monday. Yeah, I think you were in April. Yeah, my calendar didn't move for some reason. <laughs> okay. So Wednesday the 26th, 6 o'clock again? Or? Does that work for you, Mindy? Yeah. Okay, okay. good. And so that's good. You're right. So we can knock out the, the last two there. And then come together in June, and maybe it doesn't have to be the, the second Wednesday. Maybe it ends up being the third Wednesday or something. But... Um, does it allow you to, to work on, on your timeline too? That would give us time, yeah. I mean, give me time to kind of put together a, a draft. And again, I think it's just going to be in a list format. And, and then, um, you know, I think we'll work, Dan, you and I can work on the executive summary for. And then in June, we just kind of sit with, you'll have the draft ahead of time, and then we can kind of talk through it and make changes. And then um, with the idea of presenting to, and we can talk about how that happens, but presenting to council in August. Does that sound good? good. Are we still planning the second week in June, the 9th? Um, that, that would be the scheduled date. So if that still works for everybody, we could do that. Uh, or if, if we push it a week, that'd just give me a little more time to put something together. So the 16th? Yeah, for, for the June, that would be the June hearing or meeting yeah. um, to discuss the, the draft plan. Does that? Does the 16th work for everybody or is, is the 9th better? I mean, I can push it and get it done if, if needed, but. I'm okay with the 16th. That's the final, our final meeting before the presentation. Um, yeah, so I guess we, I mean, I guess we could still present in, in July if, you know. Yeah, it wouldn't be an issue in July. Yeah. It's middle of June, so. Yeah. We would. I guess it, I was yeah, thinking, and we, and we, we're not going to have a. It's unlikely we're going to have a early July meeting with the with the holiday and our usual summer schedule. Right. So you basically have a month to prepare that. Yeah. So it ended up being the second July yeah. meeting with council. What's okay. the typical date on that one? In the second Thursday. Uh, that'd be the third. Third Thursday. Third Thursday. So then, so you'd be looking at oh, the fifteenth yeah. of July. Okay. Oh, oh that's good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gets past the holidays and everything. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. Okay, so May 26th at 6. And then um, June 16th, do we like 6 or do we want to go, go back to 7 for that one? Does 6 work okay for everybody? 6 okay. works for me. Yeah. And, and yeah. the thing is, if you know, if it does stretch out, sometimes it'd be better to start a little bit early. A little early, yeah. Are you okay with that? So we don't go to bed at midnight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we go to 11 instead of midnight. All right, so. Earlier time, that I Right, I know. Perfect. Hey, everybody. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, you know, if we, do we officially adjourn? So do you want us to keep looking at the, the last two um, goals and kind of each you know individually say what we thought that's fine I, I don't think we need to call subcommittees in between so if you just okay, want to so keep looking at them individually and, and be ready to talk about the next 
two uh, from on May 26. Okay. Um, I'll get a meeting invite out. We'll you know, do do some advertising for it. Um, not not that we had any public tonight or anything, but we'll uh, <laughs> we'll, be ready, we'll, we'll be ready for it. So. For council, mm -hmm. the first and third Thursday of each month. And those are open to the public. Mm -hmm. Not right now. They're Zoom right now. Oh. If you go um, on our the city website, has all the information and the links of the Zoom. Okay. Just FYI, typically in the summer months, specifically July and August, we usually only do the second meeting only. We don't do the first ones because a lot of council are gone vacation and stuff like that. Or what time? What time are they? It starts seven thirty. So Unless there's that's a, a little bit slower time. Too. There's not we'll usually much on the agenda in the summer months. Okay. I thought it would be one. one. Yeah, one item tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go for the record tomorrow. <laughs> I think the record's to, like nine. Got executive. A short. Executive. <laughs> yeah. Well, they said it's not going to be a short executive. That's going to be the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have to register to? No. No, you just if you. For, for Zoom, basically, when you sign into the Zoom, you'll be you know put into the lobby, and then when we open the meeting, then you'll be brought in from okay. the lobby. So the Zoom link is on the website. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Barbara, do you need a motion to adjourn? Yes. We do. We do. Okay. I'll check in. Did you have, did you have something? No. Nope. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion when it's done. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Thank you all. Barbara, thanks for taking thanks, us. Thanks, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good evening. Hope you feel better. Thanks, Bye-bye. See everyone. Yeah. That's right. Yeah.